Master Carpenter Matt Jackson, inviting you to spend a few minutes with a master. I've been pretty busy on a master bathroom suite remodel project recently, doing a bunch of tear out. I did a video showing how to surgically remove sheetrock, and while I was doing that job, I shot some video about how I tear off corner bead. And it really simplifies things to get the corner bead off and then use the surgical sheetrock removal method to remove the screws, take all the sheets off. Um, even with the surgical sheetrock removal, it's a little tricky to get the corner bead itself off using that method. So if I tear the corner bead off first and then remove the sheetrock, the whole process goes pretty quick and easy. When I shot the video, I failed to uh, shoot an intro sequence. So that's what this is, just a little intro. So I'll just segue into the video where I show how to use these extractor nail pliers for pulling the corner bead, and then I'll wrap up with another shot here in the shop. Tear out and demolition is a pretty tough game, and I'm in the middle of tearing out this old shower stall to put in a, a nice new one, and I've got to take out this wall, and it's a lot easier to get sheetrock off if the corner bead is gone. Otherwise, it just complicates things and makes the ends crumble. So I wanted to talk about this tool. This is actually made for pulling trim nails out of trim. And I don't have any examples around here, but it's also the best tool I've found for removing corner bead. Here's the tool. It's a pair of extractor nail pulling pliers. Like I said, they're dedicated for pulling nails out of the back of a piece of trim. But the reason it works so good on the corner bead is that once you grip it and start pulling, the leverage of pulling is forced through this curve into the jaws, so the harder you pull, the harder it grips, which is a remarkable design, because it works like this. Just pinch and grab and turn, pulls it right off there. See if I can get a close-up on this. I just kind of jam it on the corner and it grabs that corner beat. And if it doesn't tear it off, it tears it apart. It works about the same when the corner bead is screwed on instead of nailed on. It'll leave the screws behind, but it'll just tear the metal itself off the screw heads and free up the sheetrock so it comes off easier. It's always harder to do for a camera than it is just doing it, but I think you get the idea. So that's how extractor nail pliers work for pulling off corner bead. It's an awesome tool. I'll put a link in the video description where you can get a pair on the Next Level Carpentry Amazon Influencers page if you can't find them locally. But one way or the other, you need a pair of these pliers. Once all the corner bead is pulled off, I use a pair of these Kelly Beekeepers pry bars that slip right behind the sheetrock now that the corner bead's gone and make quick work of removing the sheetrock. It doesn't matter where you get them, but demolition's a whole lot quicker, cleaner, and easier with these little tools on hand. Well, I hope that gives you an idea how useful these pliers are for removing corner bead as part of the demolition process to get a, a clean, quick, organized tear out on a renovation project. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And anything you can do to share on Instagoogle Twitface really helps the channel grow. And that channel growth helps me devote more time to producing and uploading videos. I'm in the middle of a busy summer work season with this master bathroom suite remodel project plus summer activities. There's a number of other exciting and fun things going on personally as well as with Next Level Carpentry. And those things are kind of distracting me from getting videos uploaded and produced, hence this shorter, less polished video. And I'm thankful that in spite of all that, the subscriber count to Next Level Carpentry continues to grow and it's approaching 25,000. So I'm planning just a short question and answer video for that 25,000 subscriber threshold. I'm really excited about the growth of the channel. And like I said before, as the channel grows, I can devote more time to building and uploading videos. So between now and 25,000 subscribers, when that mark comes along someday, feel free to post comments 
on this video and then I'll review those comments as the 25,000 subscriber threshold approaches and I'll build a video addressing and answering some of the questions you might have. I've never done a Q&A before so we'll just have to see how that turns out. But the bottom line is I really appreciate viewer and subscriber interaction on the videos calling me out if I miss something, asking questions for clarification if I've kind of breezed over something in a video, because it really is the worldwide community that helps build and grow this channel, which is something I really enjoy doing and enjoy it a lot more when viewers are benefiting from the stuff that I share in these videos. But I've digressed into yattering here, so I will just wrap this up by saying thanks for watching.